Good morning, friends. We are back with this old legend out here. Our good Rav Lord. And <laughs> he's he's been hit. He's been hit pretty hard in 1.1. We gotta we gotta say this. If you remember the old videos from launch of last epoch, our good Rav Lord over here was doing 700 to a million damage crits, no problem. And now he's down to like 40, 50k ish. I think the highest I've seen was about 70k. So <laughs> it's way worse. Way worse. The build is way worse. I'm not gonna lie. But it's still very strong. Like before it was broken. Absolutely broken. It was stupid how strong it was. Now it's a strong build. And it's a fun build. I like the Ravlot a lot. I just like the idea of it. That's why I still want to make this video, because, you know, I'm all about fun builds. I don't care about the super min-maxed, OP, highest corruption ever build. I don't give a fuck, because uh, I think that is boring. As you can tell, I was just running around, not actually doing much. And our Wrath Lord took care of everything. I gotta tell you, though, it is actually one of the most expensive builds I ever ran. Um, because, look at this. Let's start with the items right away. It's pretty much all legendaries, and this is not even the perfect build, right? Um, if you get better better rolls on on these two specifically, I will show them in a second. Then you can get them up. I get to, guess to at least eighty k, maybe hundred k. Crits. It depends also a lot on your on your area level, of course. But that's sort of what I've seen mostly at this higher. This was two hundred corruption, by the way. This echo. So a pretty high corruption. He can do it just fine. Still a very strong build, but not as crazy. But yeah, it's also not a cheap build, because you need all these items. And you need all these items, otherwise he doesn't do shit, okay? I've tried it with mostly exalts. It's not enough damage. It's just not enough damage. So, so let's go in. What you obviously need is the Rathlot's Harbor, right? Because this is what creates your Rathlot. So they changed a bunch of things that made it worse, especially at the bottom. Um, the, the very, very lowest one, it says, The Revlot casts Necrotic Beams and regularly consumes your non-Rev minions to empower itself. Getting health, blah, 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 that's all cool. And free spell damage for 10 seconds, does not stack. Now, before this was 10 spell damage for 10 seconds. And you could consume unlimited minions and he would stack his damage. Okay, so this doesn't work anymore. It is now a maximum of 5. Which is basically five of your volatile zombies. So if you have a Wrath Lord here and we cast the zombies, we cast five of them. He eats him up. See, he, he destroyed all of them and that empowered him for 10 seconds now with plus three spell damage. His Necrotic Beams are spell damage, so that's what, what we want. Um, so yeah, this got way nerfed. He was super strong before. Because what you did before, if you don't know, you got the aspect, not the aspect, too much Diablo, I guess. You got the affix, the experimental one that said of consummation on your potion or any potion you cast a volatile zombie you, you cast a volatile zombie spell so basically you got the belt that gave you like 10 potions or nine i think then you casted your volatile zombie you ate all your nine potions that casted like how much is it 45 or 50 volatile zombies and he then got plus 50 spell damage stacked from these guys for 10 seconds and that that is how you could actually destroy tier 4 jura in a millisecond literally he just sniped her down for a million damage crit and that was it not gonna work anymore important note it's still strong as you saw this was a 200 corruption echo um we just zoomed through it no problem but yeah so you need this and you don't want Endurance Threshold on it, it was a shitty roll, absolutely shitty. Um, if you can, you want to get health on this or intelligence, right, to make yourself more tanky. Because Ward also got nerfed, as you can tell, I'm only sitting at 4k health here, not 8k as before. So everything got nerfed in this build. It's still strong, okay? So you want to have this, I mean, I guess the Reflot's Hub is the only one that can live as a unique. You don't really need this as legendary. But if you can, get something cool on it. I will actually put in the description below and in the comments, I will put the build planner guide where um, I have the perfect affixes rolled so you know what you should be getting. And you, of course, need the Exanguinous. You always need it. Uh, this is actually a good roll. 30% increased health. If you can get the health high up, that's even better because that is basically your 
Yeah, you also have survivability. The mana wasn't really necessary. So one ethics on this is enough. You need one LP, that's cool. Increased health. If you have two, int would be another one, that's great. Um, on all these items, all you want is just buffing yourself, right? There's only two items that buff your minions. Or the help of your minions. And we're gonna go over, the, over these in a second. Uh, the exemption is must have, otherwise you die too fast. Same with last steps of the living. That basically just creates your ward. It's a low life build. So you need these two always, right? Uh, this has health on it. If you have percentage health on it or hybrid health, even better. Again, on your uniques, you want to have health or intelligence on them. You need the Lich Scorn. I tested it with the, with the Necrotic damage beams. This one just does way more damage because we run the Apogee of Frozen Light, right? So you need the Lich Scorn. What this does is it converts Dreadshade to Cold. Dreadshade is your main damage deal. I'm going to go into the skills in a second. And gives a freeze red multi and cold damage with spells and attacks. We, um, especially with Infernal Shade as well. Cold penetration. So this is all very great. Also gives you spell crit, int, and wall retention implicit. So this is kind of a, a must have with this build. It always have been. It's pretty much the same old build. Right? Actually, it's pretty much the same old build. Then, the Death Rattle. I did actually run this also with the Ice of Four Moses. Death Rattle felt much better because you want to crit multi, right? Crit multi is the damage, especially minion crit multi. More crit multi means higher crits, that's what we want. So if you have, if you don't have this, you can run the Frost, what's it called? The Eyes of the Frost Lich for Moses, something like that. It's also an amulet. You gain from the same guy you kill, while you also get the Lich Scorn, that is the for Moses at the Frost Death timeline, whatever it's called. But you definitely need this for the crit, minion crit multi, that's what you need. Now, the Apogee of Frozen Light. Don't look at the affixes I have on this. This was a bad roll, sadly. It was my only 2 LP Apogee and it was shitty. What you want to have on this is not minion melee damage. You want to have minion spell damage. Okay? You can have this on Assault, but it's very, very rare. I have like I have 5 or 6 dash tabs full of one-handed swords. I didn't have it once. Actually, I had it once, but I didn't get on the roll of Jura. So maximizing this build is very tough, <laughs> actually. But if you can, get the minion spell damage on this one. Okay? That, that's the one you need. Because he does spell damage. That's that's what we want. Other than that, what is, if you don't have it, just run a regular, regular unique. Okay? Melee cold damage for us, that's irrelevant. But plus three to cold and minion necrotic minion skills. Chance for minions to chill attackers. Minions deal 80% more cold and necrotic damage to chilled enemies. That's what we want. Everything else we don't care. That is for, for us. We don't really run this. It's really about the 80% more cold damage for minions. This applies to our Rathlop because he does cold damage due to our Dreadshade conversion from this one. If you then can also get spell damage on it. Minion spell damage. Great. But again, this one is a tough to, to, get, to get right. That, that's a tough, tough run. If you can get it, congratulations, I couldn't. And then we need Jura's Obsession. Um, the key thing about this is the last part. Stats on this item also apply to your minions. So I had Shred Armor, which is okay, but not the one I actually wanted. What I wanted to have on this one was attack speed. You cannot get any sort of damage on gloves, but you can have attack speed. Uh, actually, cast speed, sorry, not attack speed, cast speed. Um, that's what you want. Pretty much the only thing you only ever find these with one LP anyway, so that's the only thing you can run. So good luck with that. I also didn't get what I wanted. I got at least a shred armor hit, which is not bad, but not the one I needed. So you can tell you don't need them as legendaries, but it makes the build much better if you get them. Especially in 1.1 cycle 2, we learned a lot that higher corruption is much tougher to, to achieve, and all builds are sort of got nerfed down a lot. So, I think the idea was to really make more sense of the legendary crafting, to really maximize your build. Before it was kind of a nice half, most builds could easily do 300 corruption or more. Now you really kind of need it, if you want to go higher than like 300. So, yeah. Again, you don't need all the uh, legendary affixes on these, except for this one. You, you gotta need the uh, health on this, otherwise you, you're sitting on too, uh, too little of a health. So. Yeah, for the other ones, not that necessary. Everything else is just minion damage. You want to have the tier 7, uh, increase minion damage once. And the rest you put in resistances, right? Or block chance in this case. Minion damage, 
Poison resistance, health, great. Minion damage and void resistance. This isn't even maxed. I have one more FX left on this one. Cool. Um, minion damage. I don't care about the harvest. It was just part of it. Necrotic resistance, endurance. Endurance is also absolutely useless on the Acolyte because you are a build, so endurance doesn't apply. But uh, it was just what was on that roll. So you want to have all your resistances maxed as always. As, as you can tell, I don't have fire. So here we'll just put fires on this one. I don't even know I have these lying in here. Yeah, minion damage. So what we want to put here on is the fire ass. There we go. And now we are overcapped on all resistances. Perfect. So that's for the items. There aren't really any substitutions. I tried all of the combinations, as I said, um, for the weapon as well as for gloves or even the amulet. This seems to be the best combination so far. Maybe you know from some other streamer or some other content creator you know a better one. Let me know in the comments. This is what I've came up with that worked the best. So you scale with minion damage. Right? Anything else is help for you because how much damage your character does is completely irrelevant. Idols. It's the same thing for um, Necromancer as always. You go for health. 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 Health very well. Because you need more health. To survive better, otherwise you get one shot. Even though your Rathlord sort of aggros all the enemies himself and he, he eats all the shit, um, you still gotta avoid like boss damages over there. Blessings wise, I always go for um, resistances, physical resistance, all resistances, mini damage for the last one. If you have these as grand ones, you should definitely get them. I didn't even do this. Makes it better though. Lightning Rass, large idol because I need this uh, Walt DK threshold. Very simple. So you go for resistances or health, or like war decay. Or for the, for the last one, you can go for minion damage. Simple. Now for the skills. Let's start with the most important one, that is the Wrath, because your Wrath Lord gains all the benefits from this Wrath tree. So you want to go down first, very first, you want to go down here. Actually, no, no, hold up. You want to go down here first, Twin Spirit, because... Rafts have no longer the case, that's fine, but you are limited to only two rafts. That is the key thing. Because if you don't have this, your raft lord will be casting new rafts all the time instead of attacking the enemy. That is very annoying. He like gets him up to like six rafts. At that time he could have already killed most of the enemies. So get this. So he can only do two of them, and then he actually starts attacking because his beam attack is all we want. That is what the damage is. And then down here we have 180% more damage on the rafts. Which he also applies to him, obviously. Then you go down up, uh, up here. Additional necrotic damage with attacks and spells. Doesn't matter, it says necrotic. This is converted to cold without red shade. More necrotic damage. Simple. And then all the way down here, which is basically just crits. You can't even see this. And here's just... This is what you want to have maxed first. Crit multi. Because this is your real, real damage at the end. You don't need to max critical strike chance because he will always crit anyway. I'll show you in a second. So crit chance is irrelevant. We, we only need crit multiplier. Rich chance doesn't matter, but you just have to get them to get to the, the lowest one. That's the Wrath. All damage. This is also health. Fine. All damage and only two of them. Key thing. Now the Dread Shade. Our main damage dealer. Okay? You, the, fr you, the first thing you do is you go down left, okay? To this very node up here. Down here. The minion targeted by Dread Shade now always critically strikes. But it has a cooldown. Okay? You don't care about the cooldown because... The cooldown is um, lo um, shorter than the buff stays on the Wrath Lord, so it doesn't matter. You can just always cast it. So he always does crits. That's what, what we need. Okay? Very simple. And then you go up here. Especially because we are a low life build, this gives a buff effect per 3% missing health. Pretty great. Um, so that basically just makes it stronger. And we are low life, so that's fine. Larger area. It, we need this because of the duration. We need it to last longer, 100% longer. So we go up to Lone Watch. I was just thinking, why, why I have this? <laughs> uh, attack speed, cast speed, key thing. And then down here again, 60% more damage. Basically, it's just all damage and the full on crit all the time. This is your Dread Shade. And with the Infernal Shade, you want to go up here and then straight over to this one and max this one out. That is the only thing we really care about in this tree. Because this gives us a maximum attack or cast speed increase of 72% to our minions. 
if they have Infernal Shade on them. It also helps with our item, because as it says here, plus 6 cold damage with spells and attacks per attached Infernal Shade for minions affected by Dread Shade. That's a bit weird. Actually, this could go up to plus 13 if you have a better roll than I have. Basically, what this means is if you have Dread Shade and Infernal Shade on your minion, it gains plus spell damage. That's what we want. Because you're going to put both uh, effects on them. Frenzy, uh, actually unlimited duration, so the Infernal Shade never stops. Haste, it's cool. We also take this as a chance to ignite nearby enemies each second and fire Shred, Penetration Shred. So when people stand next to our Wrath Lord, they also get burned. And then you have points available, just put it in mana efficiency and cast speed so you can just throw in your Infernal Shade faster. Everything else we don't want because everything else actually kills him faster. Our Wrath Lord faster with Dread Shade on him, so we don't want that. Um, Infernal Shade, right. Volatile Zombies are really just a necessity. We only really need this node. Everything else is irrelevant, mostly. Um, that just makes that five of them are spawned at the same time, so you can gobble them up all at once. Everything else is really not necessary. I guess summoning speed and mana efficiency is cool. And then it's just Explosion Radius, because they do explode. Uh, threshold is cool, but never really works. And then we also apply Mark for Death. And we fear them. This is just nice additions, you don't really need this. The key thing you really want to have is... You don't even care about the damage they do. Because the Rathlord only gains the health from them. And he gains damage by just consuming any minions. Could be anything else, but the Volta Zombies are the fastest to, to get him up. Five at once. That's what we, what we want. Very simple. That's really... everything else is relevant. If they can apply some poison, that's cool, but whatever. Transmit is the same as always. This is our... Um, Blink skill or teleport. Um, we also gain armor from it, right? It costs less health to cast it. We gain bone armor on teleport and it lasts longer. We gain haste and frenzy. We cast an additional body, and this one is key. I always go for this kill threshold. So if a boss is below 15%, you can just transplant it on his face and he's dead. That's the key idea of this. It's mostly though our evasive skill, right? Um, so we can dodge things and we also gain the bone armor. That is very, very useful for this. So, before we go to the passives, just very briefly how you actually play this. It's very simple. You cast your Wrath Lord with W. In my case, that's the Wrath. Then, you cast your Infernal Shade on him. Which slowly kills him, but it doesn't matter. Because he leeches health by attacking people, right? So, as long as he's attacking them, he will always be fine. You put the Infernal Shade on him, this will stay on him forever. And then you hit your Dread Shade. You can see above, there is now, there's two shades. You can not see this very well, but down here there is a Dread Shade icon. If this is on, he has a Dread Shade on him. He's gonna die now, but that's fine. Once this, once your Dread Shade is off cooldown, you just reapply it. It doesn't stack, so it doesn't matter. But once it's off, you just reapply it on him. See, this is not the Dread Shade thingy on his, on him. And um, whenever it's off cooldown, just put it on him. The Infernal Shade you only have to do once. And then every 10 seconds, or pretty much when this is off cooldown, because it's 9 second cooldown, you just cast your Voltaire Zombies, he's go he gobbles them up, and then he has more um, damage. So that's pretty much it. You yourself, you just you kite all the time while he attacks enemies, you just kite. You cast your Transplant, you use your Evade. That's it, right? You're just kiting damage. You're staying away from all damage while he, he does all, all, the, all the shit, right? Very easy to play. I mean, you, you have to know boss damage because you can't tank shit. You only have 4k health. Even with all the resistances, it's not bad, but most big bosses and harbingers will most likely kill you instantly. Passives. I built the Acolyte a little bit different because I went into wall retention and resistances because it's only 40%, but the more wall retention, the better I feel with my character. You can at least tank some damage from mobs. It's at least something, right? Everything else you put in minion cast speed, uh, minion health, and of course int. Usually you go with maxing this, minion health and vitality, um, but I went for, for this one. Feels better for, to me, really. Necromancer. It's pretty much the same as always in these builds. You want to max the Risen Army, right? Minion cast speed. That's what we need, and damage as well. I put two into this just to get like 10% minion health and minion armor and minion damage reflected. It's just a nice addition. Vault retention again. Vault grant the minion death is irrelevant, but we want to have more vault. 
Health regen, minion health regen, and this here. Minion health, 150%, you want to max this, so it actually can tank some shit. Minion necrotic damage, again, which is converted to cold. Armor shred, very simple. Minion cast speed, minion attack speed, superb. Um, you can put one into this because you don't really need the... Uh, actually, you should put one into this. You don't need a minion crit chance, that's all relevant. But critical strike damage leech is health, that's very nice. Alright, so 4% of all the crits you guy does are converted to health. And here's a slight freeze rate multi, also not bad. Now, I didn't really max this ever before. But since Ward got nerfed, we kind of need more health. So I would say 5 to 8 points into the Tyrant are very useful. It reduces your minion's health, which sucks, but you gain more health as a character. You kind of need to find a balance here. Where you survive more, but your minions also don't die too fast, or your Wrath Lord in this case. So I put 7 in this, that seemed pretty nice. And a little bit of minion all resistances doesn't hurt either, so they get at least a little bit of resistance. This one is minion necrotic damage plus 10, that's just flat damage for your spells, that's what you want maxed. Again, it's converted to cold. Elemental damage and necrotic damage also works here, double the damage. And in the end, um, minion crit multi, 70% again, and minion cold damage also, and chill chance. So this is perfect for our Lich Scorn minion build. The last 10 points I always put into the Lich for some reason, the Apocrypha. Because 10 intelligence flat and mana regen is just so nice. Uh, everything of our skills, all of them rather, skill of intelligence or scale of intelligence. So this is very, very, very useful. Alright, that was it. This is your Wrath Lord in cycle 2. It's way nerfed, but it had to be way nerfed because it was super overpowered. It's still great, as you can tell, this was 200 corruption. I'm gonna give you proof of the one we did up here. 200 corruption, the one we just did earlier. Um, was no problem, as you could tell. Easy. So it can do high corruption. It's not as strong as it was before anymore. I don't think it can do tier 4 Jura very fast. You still have to kite and actually go to one of three phases. I haven't tested it, actually. Maybe I should. I don't know if it can do the pinnacle boss. Because I think the minions probably die very fast to his attacks. So you're um, probably busy recasting him all the time. Maybe he can. I'm definitely going to try it. You tell me if you manage to kill him with this build. And again, I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed this build and have fun with it. And I will see you in the next video.